All right, everybody, welcome to Unsubscribed. I did it again. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Unscripted Podcast, one-on-one uh, one -on -one today with uh, my good friend and pretty much a member of our family, uh, Miss Cami Prantel. Uh, Cami, can you introduce yourself to the audience and then uh, I'll, I'll take over from there. How far do we want to go? What? How far on the introduction, like about me? We're recording. Do we have to start over? We got to start over. Because it's not unsubscribed, it's unscripted. No, I'll introduce you and then you just tell them whatever you want. What do you mean? How far do we want to go? Like where I went to high school, like played in college, like how, how well, far gonna, do we want Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask all that. So just give them like... Well, you told him it's me. Hi, it's me. <laughs> yeah, but you know, can you say you're, you can say you're the assistant softball coach, right? Yeah. And you work for the best boss in the world? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me start over. You don't have to say that. Let me start over. Ugh. <laughs> Hang on. Um, you know, your career, man, you can make all the money in the world, but if you're not fulfilled and it sounds like you just said that, um, who cares? Because honestly, 10, 10 exits down the road, it still looks like it did back there and you're still not going to be happy. Um, but to wake up with purpose every day, it doesn't matter who you work for. I've had some great jobs and I've worked for mm -hmm. some really cool things, but if I wasn't fulfilled and if I felt like the purpose that I uh, thought I signed up for and what I got are not the same, then it wasn't worth it. And so I, you know, I, I've been called the king of restless and I've mentioned this on multiple podcasts, but yeah. uh, I don't know that I'm restless. I'm think I'm, I want to be fulfilled like you are. I want, I want to mean, I want my life to mean something. And like you said, I'm not guaranteed tomorrow morning. So if I don't wake up one day, my kids are older. Um, yeah. One in college, one going to be in college next year and one, two years behind her. But uh, if I don't wake up one morning, I want this podcast. I want the blog I used yeah. to have. Yeah. This podcast resides on. I want my friends and the people I knew to tell them the story if they don't remember it. Yeah. That my life meant something. And so you're doing that, man. That's a typical film. I'm filming Spider-Man running down the street, uh, saving whoever today. You know what I mean, like mm -hmm. it's script, it's scripted. Yeah, yeah, you know what's going to happen you, from one scene to the yeah, next. Thank yeah, thank you. Um, and and so I, I assume in a documentary, you don't know what every day is going to bring, and now you have this data, you have all this raw footage, and as you said, you went to your basement. So is that is that right? And how do you comb through probably hours and hours and hours to tell a story that, unlike the other story where Spider Man's already scripted, you're very unscripted. You're you're you know, how do you yeah, do that? Truly. That's so fascinating to me. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, from the start, I, I usually am attracted to film ideas that have at least a beginning, middle and end that I can envision. Right. And so for this one, the, the painting had to be finished or it didn't, right. but it had to have a beginning, middle and end because of the process of completing the painting. Um, so I know that's really vague. No, I think it's but perfect. It, that's still that's still at least some sense of okay that that's something to hang a narrative on right. okay and then as i start going into it and i'm meeting people who are actually depicted in the painting that's where it becomes a lot more of you know i don't know what i'm going to find out i don't know who is going to um you know be more appealing than another person um or where you know okay this this person wants to talk to me i'm going to talk to them and that leads to a whole nother avenue that i didn't think of that becomes more of the Magic documentary everybody has a million questions for you but i i am going to rapid fire a few questions if you got a couple more seconds okay let's do it you ready all right yeah. how many pair of jordans do you own um i'll tell you i've i've, I've only bought maybe two pair full price in my whole life so um so i'm a i'm an on sale jordan guy I probably have 10. 10 pair of Jordans. Do you have like the whole series or do you have multiple of one? No. No, I just, I just get the ones that I think look nice. I, I had the opportunity to, <laughs> to actually go through the, uh, the Nike, the, the employee store in Portland. Yeah. And, uh, so like I was able to buy, like I have a pair of Kobe's that um, after Kobe passed, uh, the, the, the shoe, I mean, it, the price of the shoe, it's like up to 700 something dollars. I think I paid fifty-five, sixty dollars for the shoe. So I'm a, I'm a, on, I'm a on sale Jordan purchaser. I think I bought two pair full price okay. of my whole life. That's what Rook and I did. Yes, and I, so there's a few things I want to do. One, thank you because I'm honored that that you would share that picture 
uh, with my audience. And, and again, most people are going to hear this on audio, but what I promise that you, I will do if you're listening to this is um, I will create a very a, a short clip at a minimum uh, and just to show the picture, because I'm honored that you would share that with us because rookie served this country, rookie mm-hmm. served this nation and sacrificed himself for this nation after 9-11. And I don't know that there's any other way I can put that. And I hope that's okay and respectful for you, for me to say that on your behalf, rookie served our country. And because, you know, look at the end of the day, that, that, that is important and we can never, ever forget 9-11 and those that made the sacrifices, even someone like rookie who went and sacrificed and gave and someone like yourself who took rookie there. My parents raised me like to make sure that my social media is 100% clean. Like it's almost like, I think my mom told me once, like your social media is what, you know, jobs and owners are going to look at first. And like situations, even nowadays with like NFL players, major league players, where they will go back to 2007 and like pull up something that you said when you were a teenager or even whenever you first got social media and they pull it up against you and they use it against you. Yep. And so like I wanted to make sure number one, like I never want that to happen to me, no matter how like small and stupid it is. Like I, you know, I 100% keep my social media clean of, you know, whatever I'm liking, whatever I'm retweeting, whatever I'm posting myself. Like I want to make sure that like if my future you know, manager, my future boss, like. (laughs) You decided to join me on this journey and I won't forget that. And, um, there's others, there's so many other people that have joined us. Uh, and I, I can't, uh, number one, believe it, but number two, um, thank you all enough because, um, you know, it's a dream, it's a vision and, we all kind of jumped out of the plane without a parachute, but um, as we're descending, <laughs> every now and then we get this little parachute and then a bigger parachute and a bigger parachute, and it's been so fun. And so I think the closing words I would say is that, no, we I don't make money on a podcast. I, I want to make sure people understand you don't make money on a podcast, uh, regardless of what YouTube videos say or other things. Uh, Unless somebody wants to write us a big old check to be the title sponsor. And that's absolutely possible. By the way, email me, Aaron at mindscripted.com or Cammy at mindscripted.com. But uh, I think our business um, and people like yourself and Nick and Jess and uh, Cooking with CJ, shout out Cooking with CJ because that's my dude um, and Kelsey and uh, gosh, there's so many others. Um, uh, I feel like the list grows every day, but everyone that's kind of come together to say, let's do something bigger together. Um, Quotes. Yeah. Well, I I think, especially for a dad with daughters, Mm -hmm. I think we need to realize that the example we set, the words we use, the tone we use, uh, how we lead our family is pretty much going to be what they end up being attracted to in their home husband someday. Absolutely. That's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. but that that's 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 the job that god gave us and, mm-hmm. and i think too many men run from that ignore that don't emphasize that enough i am far far from perfect man in that area right, right. but i do know our 15 year old daughter looks at me in a way that she looks differently than any other man in her life mm-hmm. and i only have so many years to make that impression uh to speak my words into her heart with not only the, the the truth of what I'm saying, but how I'm saying it, uh, because she's going to carry that with her, I think, throughout her life. And my voice, she has a lot of voices in her life, and she will going forward. Mm-hmm. But I think at the core of who she becomes, how she sees life, uh, the value she puts in a husband someday, the expectations of what the house is supposed to look like, it's all going to be set by me. Mm. or you or any other dad listening to this right now yeah and and we, and we can we can ignore that we can brush that away we can de-emphasize that or or we can step up and say you know what god's blessed me as a leader and i need to lead yeah i need to lead the right i don't have not, not i'm not saying i'm gonna be perfect about it but i do need to be intentional about how i'm leading my home yeah. and the voice that i have in my wife and my daughter's ear 
mm -hmm. or my son. Just mm -hmm. I'm just speaking specifically about a daughter because that's what we have. The other thing I will tell you is it sounds like you had an incredible mom, as did I, and um, and you have an incredible bride, as do I. Um, those two things are so important, right? I mean, I know that, that you spoke about your dad and, and um, losing him and, and those challenges, but you had an incredible mom of faith and you have an incredible bride that puts wind in your sails. Um, and, you know, boy, if, we, if we've got one of those two things or both, man, we're, we're blessed, we're right? Blessed. I, I, we're blessed. Because, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a visionary too, as evidence of this podcast. And, you know, to, to have a bride or, or a mom that says, go do, go do it. I, you know what I mean? Um, and then to have a bride and now I'm going to get choked up. Um, Um, I mean, Clojure's got all the credit. Everybody knows that. Um, get the easiest job in the world. Um, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The eighth inning guy has to come in and face, you know, one, two, three, two, three, four. In the eighth inning, the closer comes in and gets seven, eight, nine. He's the hero. <laughs> it's um, true. It's true. Okay, so, so I graduated that. thinking I was going to be single forever. And um, no, I, I we were in church. Mm -hmm. I was in church with my mom and dad in the, in the pew. And, uh, um, this family walked in in front of us. This is going to be in my book, not to plug my own book coming, but it'll be in the show notes. Uh, the future book will tell this full story, but anyway, uh, this family walked in in front of me and, uh, I saw a girl and, uh, I knew I was going to marry that girl one day. And now I'm going to start crying. Do you hear me? Pack that can actually make, but I heard a wise thing, I'd say just a few weeks ago, you know, seek less to be understood and seek more to understand. Right. And that's going to require one major thing. And that's asking better questions instead of just going, why did you do that? Or why do you feel like that? There are many deeper ways than just some, you know, it's just some close ended questions. It's just getting, getting, you've got to build a relationship. You've got to get close. You've got to change your proximity and you have to be willing to get uncomfortable. If you're coming from the white lens, which I do, I come from a, uh, I'm Caucasian as much as you can tell, I am as white as they come. Although the students who call me Mr. G kind of argue that some days, um, <laughs> but like, the idea that I've got to be willing to be uncomfortable, that I've got to go sit on a porch sometimes and help lean into some of the pain sure. and say, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm with you in this. And the key always, no matter what, is when you start the journey, you've got to stay consistent. You've got to keep showing up. You can't do this for a week. You can't just put a black box on your social media and think you just change the world. Right. No one's listening to that. I love playing music. It is a, a source of joy in my life, but it is not the source of joy. Mm. You see what I mean? Yep. Uh, some, something like that, if you make it the source of joy, it's going to let you down. And when it does, it, it ha you know, you give it the power to destroy you, you know? Right. Right. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm jaded. Maybe I've been around Nashville too long, but I, I'm, I just know that, like, you know, it, th this town will break your heart. Mm. And has the power to, right? And so right. I, I'm grateful for what I do. I'm grateful that I work for an awesome boss and that we have a great team, you know? And absolutely, I love stepping on stage. I want to step on stage in front of 15,000 people again or yeah. more, yeah. you know, and crank it up and feel, you know, feel that bass coming through those subs, rattling the whole stage and see the lights come up and the people screaming again. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. It's not my source of joy. Mm.
big enough car for four kids. <laughs> for your kids. Okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I just, in my, in I, my vowed, mind, I, I vowed I would never have a minivan. So I just <laughs> it and went to the Suburban. <laughs> I, I don't even know if they had minivans in that, in oh, those years. Did they? Okay. All right. Cause I just, in my mind, when I was putting out questions, I'm thinking I'd love to see Mark Price driving a minivan. I really would <laughs> <laughs> on his way to practice. Do you feel like you hit that scene right at that sweet spot of when, you know, CCM music was really just exploding with a lot of great talented artists. I do. I mean, you know, I grew up listening to some of the pioneers in Christian music from Larry Norman to second chapter, Keith green. Um, but when I came on, it had really grown in popularity and nationwide, you know, uh, fan base. And Yes, I mean the '90s were were great. You know, when you think about um, some of the big successes of Amy or Michael or Jars of Clay, or you know, Okay, let me start over. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> uh, all right. All right, everybody, welcome back to my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. All right. Uh, Literally, I have worship music on all the time, everywhere. Like, whether it's the new Matthew West, whether it's Casting Combs, whether it's Casting Crows, whether it's... <laughs> That's just how. Sorry, I'm dead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just not really thinking. I should sit in my room watching So for me, just to connect with you has been a blessing. It's a bucket list thing for me. So you're, you become a hero to me, man. Just to watch your life inspire people. Every night when we watch that video take place, there's people in the crowd that are there for that moment. Yeah. And mom, Myself included. Myself included. Yeah, there, there's there's moms there with their children in wheelchairs, or there's moms there with their kids that might have or whatever needs that they have, and those moms are holding on to their kids. Do you encourage your listeners that if they haven't lately, they need to share their story and right. don't listen to the, to the enemy that may think that nobody wants to hear their story. No, the fact is people need to hear their story. Right. And so they need to share it uh, however way they can, whether at, around the cooler at work, whether, you know, in the ball, ball fields with, you know, with parents taking their kids to sports, whether it's in school, like they need to share their story. It's powerful. And you give God glory every time you share your story. Well, and I, I have to share this with you guys as you're saying that. I have, I have so many notes as you were talking. Um, one, uh, I want to piggyback right off of that point since it's, it's the latest thing you said. Um, uh, and I think she'd be okay with me sharing this. I have a, a D1 athlete that shared, oh. asked me if she could use our platform to share her story of anxiety and depression and things like that this week. Uh, in two days, she has over 1,000 views. And wow. it's not about the, it's not about stats for yeah. us. It's about a thousand people read the message to your point. Yeah. Uh, a thousand people, I don't know who they are. And anonymously, they were able to go and read the story of someone else. So she's giving other people the gift of going second from what you said. Um, this is completely random, but welcome to Unscripted. Um, today's March 24th. And in 1984, a, a movie came out called The Breakfast Club. And today is March 24th. And that was the day. I'm sorry. I, I don't know when the movie came out, but I know that on March 24th, 1984, those kids were in, um, what do they call it? Detention. They, they had to spend a Saturday at, they had to spend a Saturday in detention. The reason why I bring this up is because to your point, 
Today is March 24th, and in March 24th, 1984, they wrote a letter that I, that everybody's posting on social media today. And your point is this, that movie affected me. as an, in, in 1980, that movie affected me to the point where as soon as I see the letter that they wrote, Sincerely Yours, The Breakfast Club, I can't forget where I was when I saw the movie, who I was with, what that movie made me feel for not just that day, but the many years after, uh, as I realized a lot about myself from this movie. And I know this is really random, but your point is that I don't forget 1984, March 24th. To your point, the day we were saved, the day God called us, the day God spoke to us, the day, the day God pulled us out of the mud. Do we remember that as clearly as we remember March 24th, 1984? I heard a quote a few weeks ago that said, the God of your mountaintop is also the God of your valley. And man, that how powerful that is, right? Because we... We like to celebrate the God of our own stuff, you know? Like, God is good, God is good. And, and yet, I don't know that we always acknowledge that's the same God when we're in the valley. You know what I mean? And, and we want to, um, we want to share our frustration with Him when we're in the valley, but we don't always praise Him when we're in the mountain. If something's going to be important to you on the last day of your life, you better make it important to you now. Can you talk about that? Well, just I would ask our listeners right now to just think quickly, what's going to be important to you on the last day of your life? Right. Uh, it, it's probably not going to be uh, how, how how well my uh, daughter did in dance. Oh, OK, yeah. um, those those be some good memories. Absolutely. But, but but what's going to be important on your last day? OK, mm -hmm. well, to me, it is. Am I am I right with the Lord? Mm. Am I did I live my life? in a way that I was called to, I was called to live. Mm -hmm. uh, not that I was perfect, but, but did I keep God in the place in my life that he deserves to have? Absolutely. I think we're, I think most people are going to want to know that and have that peace about them. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that you probably shouldn't wait till the last 30 minutes to figure out. Right. Um, how did I treat people? How did I treat people that, that God crossed my path mm -hmm. over all those years? Absolutely. Uh, do I have a clean heart towards others? Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship with uh, not only my wife or my or or my husband, but our our kids, our family members. How did I lead them? How did I treat them? How did I teach them? Uh, all those things. What what did I do with my time in terms of investing with others, or did I live a life that was all about me? I think that's probably most one of the most important things when we get to the end and we look back is, is what did I do with my life? Was it all about me or was it all about others? Uh, so are you a Johnny Gill guy? Is it because I, I got a feeling you could probably do some Johnny Gill. I can do some Johnny Gill. Can you stand the rain is, I mean, it's kind of the one that everybody, I mean, it's, and that's not bad that everybody goes to that, but. Yeah, definitely, man. Probably Can You Stand the Rain. That'd probably be the only one that I think would give it justice if I said, you know, that would be the song. That, that, that would, would be the one. Be that, that's the sure. one they play yeah. in the gas station. All right. So in a in a perfect storm of a world, I would love to be in that gas station when you sing Can You Stand the Rain with an unscripted T-shirt on while I'm buying a Diet Coke. <laughs> Let's do it, dude. I mean, we got to make that happen, bro. All right. It, hey, it's on. It is on. It is lit. It's going to happen. I guarantee it. Uh, all right. So I'm going to have more and more fun. Huh? Is it more and more fun? You should like co host my list. It'd be a lot of fun. Do it. Oh, man. <laughs> Alright, let's start. Let's <laughs> start. Come on. Okay, you gotta get your focus in. Get the prayer thing going. Okay. Um, right. um, I'm Gary Marvel. Um, I am a uh, half a man. I have no arms or legs. And, uh, I thought I am not connected. He likes little people, so I have no friends.
and you'll see, you might see me there, possibly. Yeah, you might. Know, yeah, that's the carrying out. I don't know. What her matter? I don't know. Math and grammar and little people. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> Alright, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Alright, that's right. We'll see you in our six and six eight burger camp. Hey, um, last, last week, or a couple of weeks ago, I wrote a blog about a funeral I attended. Um, and the funeral was an ice cream social. Uh, apparently, this woman's biggest wish was when she passes away, just serve ice cream and talk and be together. And I walked into this room and I could not believe, first of all, the amount of ice cream. Um, <laughs> and second of all, just the way people did connect. I mean, even in the middle of the, the virus, there were people connecting in different ways and talking and laughing about her. And um, so I wrote that one and, you know, it was just basically moderate response um, until someone I went to high school with emailed me and said, hey, my dad passed away a couple of weeks ago. And because of your blog, we served ice cream. Wow. And that, you know, it's that like hits, right, away, right? right away, I said, I don't care if anybody else read it. She right. read it and right. she acted. How cool yeah. is that? Precious Lord, take my hand, be me all, and let me stand. And I was in a predic predicament, Aaron, where I was like, all right, do I slip my wrist or do I slip my throat? Mm. Well, it's going to be quickest, man. And that's how low it was. Wow. You, want to see, you, know, you know what's even more screwed up? I actually thought, what's going to make the least amount of mess in this truck? Because my son's going to get the truck. Oh, my God. I don't want to leave a mess. And then it even got worse than that. In my mind, it was, mm. what's going to – leave the worst leave the most repairable marks so my mom won't won't see it while i'm in my casket i mean that's man. that's where i was man and wow. i was in a lo lonely rest area on interstate 95 east of orlando and um screaming out i had the deceiver in my ear saying they're better without without you they can use that money mm. your son's going to go play college ball you know, he's got a senior year of high school. They're going to be better off without you. And I was believing the lie. And I screamed out to God one more time and just said, I'm better off not being here. So here I come. Mm. And, and Aaron, at that moment, even though I confessed my, my belief in Christ when I was 13 years old, repeat, repeated a prayer from a pastor, you know, at the pulpit, that I had no clue what it meant. At that moment, uh, you can call it, I heard the word of God or I sensed the word of God or popped into my head, whatever it was. The words came to me, who's going to watch Garrett, my son, play football on Friday night? Mm -hmm. You're going to need to be there on a Friday night. We have a lot to cover, but I do want to start off with the fact that your husband may have the highest ERA ever in a home run uh, contest. Um, can we talk about that for a minute? What is his yeah. ERA in the home run contest? Yeah, the uh, the funniest meme of the entire home run derby last year was one of him side by side with Jake DeGrom, who at that point had just gone from a sub one ERA above one. I think it was like one, one, five or one, two, five. So on the meme, it had David on one side, Jake on the other, and it had their stats down the side. And when it got to ERA, Jake's was one point, whatever. And David's was infinity. So <laughs> right, <laughs> it right. was, uh, 
it was quite a fun experience, but he gave up a lot of home runs. A lot of home runs. So for anybody not not familiar, uh, Billy's husband uh, was, I, I, and t- please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, he pitched BP to Pete Alonso in the home run derby. Is that correct? He did. He, he did, did. And he gave up a lot of nukes. <laughs> a, a lot, lot of home runs, as, as they call them. <laughs> as Pete continues to say to him, thanks for the meatballs. He was, <laughs> right. Dave was texting with Pete the other day, you know, uh, well, after the season. And um, Pete was like, you know, Jesse, I just keep thinking about those meatballs. <laughs> And he's talking about the pitches that David That's threw. Right. It was it was pretty impressive. David did quite a, an amazing job. He's been throwing BP for 100 years. I mean, he's about 120 years old at this point, in, it feels like, in baseball. In baseball years, we've been right. in pro ball. Yeah, we've been in pro ball for 35 years. He was in college ball before that. He was throwing batting practice when he was in college to teammates, you know, and then in turn became a college baseball coach and then got into professional baseball. Yeah, we Olympic her three Olympic gold medals that Aaron just dropped in, you know. I, I was an Emerald champion once, but, you know, like, no, no big deal here. Just three-time Olympic gold medalist, Emerald champion. Uh, who, who's the winner here? Saying, I mean, I'm out of my Emerald championships. Yeah. Good for you. I worked on to them. <laughs> anyway, all right, three seconds, I'm not over. Uh, Point, but... Uh, just speaking with Aaron so much today, a little bit about you, a little bit about unscripted, a little bit about you know his heart, and I think this world loves Aaron, you know, to the moon and back if they if they had an opportunity to meet him. And he's given people like me, and he's giving you this opportunity to share this platform and to share your heart and share your story. And I just pray so hard for you right now that that you are just incredibly real with him. Um, I have seen firsthand how many people have reached out to me since the platform that Unscripted has given me. And I just pray that you take this opportunity because you have so much to offer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and I can't wait to DVR the episode on Shark Tank. (laughs) You know what? If we make it on Shark Tank, you will be of the first that I call. I mean, I'm going to call my mom first. (laughs) All right. Just give me an interview with Mark Cuban and we'll be good to go. So no, I'm just kidding. I think this this would be a good deal for Mark. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'd be be huge. Um, You know, so, so it's just, it's amazing to think about, you know, how God can use your yes. Mm Mm-hmm. To truly, and, and, and always remember, make sure your vision and your goal is big enough to create rooms for others to join you. Right. Oh, I love that. When you truly make, you know, uh, life lasting changes. Say that, say that again. I really love that, that your no, bigger, I, your room, your, your dream, I'm going to screw it up. You say it again. No, just make sure your vision and your dream is big enough to create room for others to join you. Oh, long life lasting changes that was a uh, mic know, drop I, moment man you know, <laughs> you know but, 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 but don't take criticism from anybody i would never take advice from mm, that's really i good. don't have any idea where i heard that from yeah um I'd- Um, the first concert I ever went to, Eddie, do you know which one it was? New edition. Do you remember this? New edition. 
New edition. Can no, you name it, the three yeah, groups wait. that were at the New Edition concert? Were you at that show? New Edition, UTFO, and the Fat Boys. No, it wasn't Fat Boys. It wasn't Fat oh. Boys. Who was the no, third no, no, one? No, no. Wait, U UTFO. It was the Fat Boys. No. No. Just, were you at, the, at Front Row Theater. <laughs> Billy's getting angry. No, Aaron, Aaron, yes, wait. Front Row Theater, right? It was it wasn't Eddie. Do you remember who the third one was? I don't remember who the third one was. Roxanne. Roxanne Shante. It was my it was my first concert. It was New Edition, UTFO. Yeah. Jesse Johnson Review. Jesse Johnson. No, that was dude. Review. Wait, wait, time out, dude. Time <laughs> out. Time to freak out. That was a different tour then, man, because I saw when we saw him, Ed, Ed, didn't you go with me to see him? Yeah, I did. It was New Edition. UTFO and the Fat Boys. But remember I don't, that, Eric? I don't remember that. Anyway, but I would have rather been at the freaking Jesse Johnson concert. Holy cow. <laughs> so I for those listening that may not know, and I've used this man. for trivia questions. Aaron, here you go. I, I, we Aaron, lost Laura. Down. She's done. <laughs> She's out. <laughs> but <laughs> Jesse Johnson, does anybody know who the heck Jesse Johnson is? Because I didn't time. know until that night. The time, bro. The time, the guitar, the guitar player, player from the, the time. time. So when Morris Day says, Jesse, yeah. now Jerome, yes. on that song, he's of talking course. about Jesse Johnson. So, dude, How here's that? Here was, <laughs> some history. So, Aaron, I here's this the song hit. he played. I really don't. Aaron, 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 I'm about to tell you. Here was this hit. I want to be your man, baby. Oh, bonus oh, material. Oh. Is that this going to get me in jam. some kind of violation if I put it out? Like, am I? Gonna, am I